Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development. What I want to do in today's video is cover two fundamental ideas in car aerodynamics. And if you get your head around those two ideas, you'll understand about 80 or 90% of road car aero. Let's take a look. So the most important idea to take on board is that car aerodynamics is primarily about air pressures. Nearly all drag and lift or downforce is caused by air pressures acting on the car's body as the car moves forward. So this computer animation shows some of those air pressures on this particular shape of car. The hotter the color, the redder the color, the higher the pressure. And we'll do an easy one first. At the very front of the car, the bluff front of the car, you can see that's a hot color, high pressure. There's high pressures pushing on the front of the car. And at the base of the windscreen, we can also see high pressures pushing on the car. High pressures push on the car, low pressures you can think of as pulling on the car. So where are some of these low pressures? Well, there's lots of them. Look up here. That dark color, blue or black, shows low pressures as the airflow wraps around that little curve. The same down here on the A pillar. So the air is actually pulling on the car in those particular spots. We can see there's all these different air pressures acting on the body panels. It's like the battle of the pressures. Which pressures are going to have the greatest effect on the car as it moves through the air? So high pressures you can think of as pushing on the surface, just like if you got your hand and you pushed it down on a table, you're applying a force to that table, a push on the table. That's what high pressures do. They push on the panel. Low pressures you can think of as pulling on the panel, as if you were trying to lift the table that you just a moment ago were pushing down on. And it's not just theory. We can easily measure these pressures on a moving car and see what's going on. So here are some air pressures that I measured on a Tesla Model 3 along the center line of the car, the longitudinal axis. Uh, 15 km an hour winds at the time, doing about 80 km an hour, 50 miles an hour, average of 100 readings in each direction using an EvoScan P16A scanner. So where are some of these high pressures that are pushing on the car? Well, as we saw a moment ago, there's one right at the front of the car plus 210, we'll just call them units. The base of the windscreen, we can see that high pressure there as well, but we can see it's not nearly as high as at the front of the car. So they're pushing on the car. But you can also see that the pressures are dominated by low pressures, less than atmospheric, pulling on the car. Low pressures, low pressures, low pressures, all the way across the top of the car, pulling on those panels, trying to lift the car upwards, in other words. But on this car, we also have some quite good low pressures under the car, pulling down on the car. So whether this car develops lift or downforce depends on the amount of low pressures on top versus the amount of low pressures underneath. It's like the battle of the pressures. And it's the same with uh, drag, aerodynamic drag. How do the pressures on the front of the car compare with the pressures on the back of the car? So think of car aero in terms of air pressures and the pushes and the pulls that result from that. The battle of the pressures. Low pressures on top, trying to lift the car. Low pressures underneath, trying to pull the car downwards. Any high pressures on top of the car, like we saw at the base of the windscreen, are trying to push the car downwards. There's all these different air pressures occurring all over the car. It's not just a case of saying, um, well, that, that's all high pressure or all that's low pressure. There's, there's variations in these pressures. So drag, <clears throat> excuse me, aerodynamic drag is the aerodynamic force resisting forward motion of the car, trying to pull it backwards. Now clearly, as we can see in this uh, Land Rover computational fluid dynamics image, there are the red, the hot colors, the, the high pressures, trying to push the car backwards there and there. But at the back of the car, which we can't see, there are low pressures pulling back on the car. So we have high pressures on the front of the car, pushing on the car, and we have low pressures at the back of the car, pulling on the car, the result is drag. You can think of, uh, in the battle of the pressures, you can think of um, three people 
pushing on the front of the car, trying to push it backwards. And you can think of three people at the back of the car with a rope attached to the back of the car, pulling backwards on the car. You can see that these um, low pressures here on the front, trying to pull the car forward, trying to pull the car forward, are outweighed, way outweighed by the pressures trying to push the car backwards. Every car has aerodynamic drag and that's why. There is another type of drag called frictional drag. That's the remainder of your uh, 10 or 20%, but just think of it in terms of pressures and you'll, you'll, you'll uh, be way, way ahead. Um, frictional drag, the more modern the car, the less frictional drag it's got. Lift. Here are some arrows that I've drawn in on my little Honda Insight to show the aerodynamic pressures. So if we have a low pressure on top of the car, as we've been saying, there's a pull force and the lower the pressure, the greater the pull. So what I've done is I've drawn arrows where the length of the arrow is proportional to the pressure. OK, so if it's a really low pressure, it's a longer arrow. So this is a highly modified car. It runs full under trays and, and other aerodynamic modifications. We can see there's a lot of pull downwards at the front by that uh, under tray, that curved under tray. There's a fair bit of pull down in the middle. Not the under trays there aren't as good because there's an exhaust in the way. And there's a fair bit of pull down at the back caused by my rear diffuser, which is fed air from the rest of the under tray system. So that's pulling the car downwards. And the air pressure at the base of the windscreen, of course, has, has a partly pull, a push down component. But on top, we've got all these lift forces. Now, this particular car, because of the modifications, actually develops downforce. Um, there are more low pressures under the car. and They are lower than the ones on top, so it actually pulls the car down on the suspension. You can measure downforce or lift by actually measuring suspension deflection at speed and averaging it, and this car actually develops downforce. But it does so simply because of the pressures under the car are lower and over a bigger area than the low pressures on top of the car. It's just a case of the pressures fighting each other. It's no more complicated than that. The second idea to take on board directly relates to the first idea. And the second idea is where you have high airflow speeds, you have low pressures. Where you have low airflow speeds, you have high pressures. Now, these occur on the car, even when the car is going the same speed down the road. So think of a car doing 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour down the road. Because there are pressure variations all over the car, there are also local flow speed variations, or to turn it the other way around, because there are local flow speed variations, there are also pressure variations. Now you might think, well, this is all getting really complicated, but it's not, it's actually easy. So remember that high pressure at the front of the car, where I'll get my mouse down here. Why is the pressure high there? It's because the flow is slowed right down. In fact, in some cars, the flow comes to a complete halt at the front of the car, giving a high pressure. That's why radiator intakes are at the front of the car in that position, because the air is being brought to a halt. It's slowed to zero, and so the pressure is as high as possible, pushing air through the radiator. At the base of the windscreen, the airflow is slowed. That's why the pressure is higher. Over the top of this curved roof, the airflow is accelerated around that corner. Its flow speed is high, and therefore the pressure is low, trying to pull the car upwards. The same with this little curve at the front of the car. The flow is accelerated around that curve, and so the pressure is low. And you might say, so what? Well, think of a rear spoiler. The function of a rear spoiler fundamentally is to slow the flow speed, that was hard to get out, slow the flow speed and therefore increase pressure. Increases pressure on the spoiler but it also increases pressure ahead of the spoiler where that flow speed is reduced. So whenever there are high pressures there must be uh, low flow speeds. Wherever there are high pressures there are, sorry, whenever there are <laughs> <clears throat> Let me get this right. Start again. Wherever there are high pressures, the speed of the airflow is slow. Wherever there are low pressures, the speed of the airflow is high. And again, let's go back to this uh, image of the Model 3. High pressure, slow flow speeds. Low pressure, high flow speeds. Now, 
We want to get high flow speeds under the car because we want low pressures there, don't we, to help pull the car downwards. So how do we get high flow speeds under the car? We use a smooth under tray. And we use a smooth under tray with curves in the right position so that we can accelerate the flow around that lower curve, a diffuser in other words. So you can see the direct connection. We want low pressures under the car, we want a smooth under car. If it's all rough with exhaust and suspension and all bits hanging down, we won't get that high speed flow, so we won't get the low pressures. So we can apply these ideas straight away to looking at cars and obviously modifying cars as well. High speeds equals low pressure. As we said, uh, we can see straight away where all the, the speeds are high because the pressures are low. And look incidentally at how on the Model 3, the flow speed is slowing as we get to the end. And so the pressure is no longer as low. Okay, we want that to occur. Now, I've been talking about what's called attached flow. And that is where the flow follows the shape of the car, follows the shape of the roof, follows the shape of the windscreen, follows the shape underneath that smooth underfloor and so on. Where the flow separates, different behavior occurs. And the most obvious example of flow separation is in the wake where the airflow separates behind the car. And in this uh, station wagon, uh, you can see that's where the flow has separated. You can see from the smoke trails, that's now separated flow. The smoke shows the airflow attached, 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 and then it separates at that point and all this flow is separated. Now, in separated flow, we have a lot of random motion, random speeds, random directions of air. It's not as simple as saying high or low speeds. There's all sorts of speeds occurring within the wake. But the important thing to know is wakes always give moderately low pressures. Not as low as achieved over these upper curves, but still lower than atmospheric, and that means pulling back on the car. This is why the classic teardrop shape, where you have a very long tapering tail with almost no wake at the end, or basically zero wake, it has very low drag because there's no wake behind it with the low pressure pulling back. So wakes are different to what I've been talking about earlier. Just remember, in wakes, in separated flow, the pressure is always moderately low. So, want less drag? You've got to try and uh, decrease the pressures acting on the front-facing panels. We don't want high pressures there. And we want to increase them on the rear-facing panels. Now, obviously, it's easier to say than do, but that's what we're really aiming at when we want to reduce drag on a car. Want less lift? Well, we want to decrease the pressures on the underside panels, make them lower, and we want to increase them on the upper panels. And I showed this image uh, of the car earlier, the Honda Insight. This is a slightly different version with a ducktail spoiler and with a better under tray. These are the real world measured pressures at 80 kilometers an hour. Um, you can see the high pressure on the front, that's causing drag, and you can see the moderately low pressure in the wake causing drag as well. That one's pulling back, and this one at the front's pushing on the front of the car. But what's interesting in this image is we can see very clearly the patterns of pressures above and below. Minus 95, minus 90, minus 161, the diffuser working really well, pulling down on the car. And this little ducktail spoiler is giving plus 17, a push downwards there. And also these pressures here, in front of the spoiler are not as low as they once were. They've increased, but we've still got low pressures across the top of the roof. The outcome of the battle of the pressures above and below is this car in this form and the earlier form as well actually has downforce. Pressures, that's all there is. Pushes and pulls acting on body panels. So flow speeds and therefore the pressures tells you about 90% of car aero. Um, maybe 70% on an old car, which has got a lot of roughness in the body, but you know, 80 or 90% on modern cars. I think the final point to make, and this is, I guess, the promo for my books, is it's actually easy and cheap to measure those pressures for yourself, testing on the road or track. You really only need a simple analog gauge, a simple pressure measuring puck, and the car that you're going to do it on, and at the front of the car, temporarily mounted on a pole, on a suction cap, a little thing for sensing atmospheric pressure, reference pressure. 
But it's really, I mean, look, if you can measure turbo boost, you can measure um, air pressures on cars, aerodynamic pressures on cars. It's not terribly complicated. But what it does do is it gives you a window into all those pressures I've been talking about. I'm fitting a rear spoiler. How much does it actually increase the pressures on it and ahead of it? Or I'm trying to get low pressures under my car. I'm going to try different shaped under trays, just make them out of cardboard and test at relatively low speed, like 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour. What are the pressures underneath? No need to guess, no need to use rules of thumb, no need to copy others. You simply measure what your car is actually producing and you can see in the battle of pressures what you are doing to drag, what you are doing to lift, what you are doing to thrust and what you are doing to downforce. It's ideal if you are optimising a particular aerodynamic attachment. The book, Vehicle Aerodynamics, Testing, Modification and Development, it's not a cheap book, but I think the techniques that it shows and the understanding it engenders will, will save you money immediately you start modifying your car. It's available from Amazon in your country. Thank you.